So I talk in my new book, The Anti-Globalization Breakfast Club, about mm. compassionate capitalism, about re-engineering our social values. Mm. The financial crisis we're in today is not about whether Obama's going to print more money or about whether China's going to buy more American bonds. It's not about whether uh, currencies are going to be appreciated or depreciated. These are techniques. These are band-aids for the problem. The problem is our underlying assumption of what motivates us, what drives us. And if mm. greed is the underlying assumption, then all those things will be worthless. Give me an example of what compassion capitalism could be. Microcredit. Mm. Mohammed Yunus, Nobel Pre mm -hmm. Peace he Prize winner. He was a close guest. Yes, mm. and he, he is also one of the Amazing stars man. in my book, mm. my new book. And he has simply created a system, mm. a banking system, mm -hmm. a profitable banking system, where very poor people can take small amounts of money and begin their own businesses. Mm. It's not aid, it's not charity. They must pay back our loan. But in turn, they empower themselves. Likewise, we're doing similar things in Tibet, where I'm empowering people to do crafts. You know, we talk about culture, sustainability of culture. Mm. Culture can survive if there's an economic foundation for it. If we take away the economic foundation, then it goes into a museum. You buy a ticket and you gawk at a costume, right. and you say, oh, that's the way we used mm. to live. But the values are gone. Mm -hmm. Those values are precious. And we need to keep those values. So you need to create economic foundations. That can be through tourism. That can be through craft development. It can be through creating new age music by mm -hmm. fusing traditional music with electronics. These are all things that can be done. We have micro equity programs, micro finance programs for carpet weaving, for textile making, creating mm -hmm. new age fashion with very old style textiles. These are all ways to sustain one's livelihood, and more importantly, to have an identity. Because when people feel their identity, they're proud mm. to be who they are. Mm. They have something to live for. Mm. Now you own a courtyard restaurant here, um, and you also have opened a guest house in Lhasa. How are you applying compassion capitalism to these projects? These projects are based on this concept. It all began mm. with heritage restoration. Mm. Architecture is a keystone of culture. Mm. Every people's, every ethnic group's architecture is a dialogue between those people and the environment around them. So I began my journey really by protecting the architecture of Beijing. I think, mm -hmm. you know, Beijing culture is very rich. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in economic development, we're rushing forward so quickly, we're destroying a lot of the things that are very precious to the next mm -hmm. generation. So it began by trying to restore old courtyards and then protect an entire neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And so you can create a restaurant, you can create a boutique hotel, you can sustain the economy, and you can preserve the neighborhood and actually give it a new value and give people, more importantly, an identity to be proud of protecting what is theirs. We applied the same concept in Lhasa, but we went mm. beyond. Okay. There we have two boutique hotels. Mm. Again, it's involving, we've restored so far three buildings in the old section of Lhasa. Mm. And everything that's being used there, whether it's the plates in the restaurant, the bed covers in the hotel, mm. the curtains, are all made by local Tibetans under the micro-equity programs, mm. many of whom are actually handicapped. And the idea, again, is to revive these crafts, keep them alive, and create a community. I call it mm. actually the consensus community of the Himalayas. And with this platform, we're also able to reach out and do other projects. We mm. have a medical clinic. We support education. We support uh, eye operations. One of my, my big mm. concerns is blindness on the Himalayan mm -hmm. plateau. Every year we support entire teams of doctors that go in and do operations. And, uh, you know, for a very small amount of money, mm. a blind person can see. Mm. For a very small amount of money, a sick person can be cured. Right. And we forget that. And so, in a way, these become communities. And the consensus communities is a way, it's an alternative model for development. It's another approach. So your businesses are essentially, the profits from those businesses are being put back into the Correct. community. Exactly. They're mm. social enterprises.